Two ball clubs, one division. Indians on the road as Cleveland goes up against the Chicago White Sox. Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. An afternoon at U.S. Cellular Field with the fans ready to rock and roll. And we'll see the Chicago White Sox playing to an eager home crowd today. I'm Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Crook with me, Major League Baseball, 2K Sports. The starting pitching, we'll see Jared Washburn. Steve will be watching how he approaches this Cleveland lineup. A good looking lefty on the mound right here against the lineup that could put some runs up on the board. So pretty even matchup. Lineup for the Indians. We'll take a look, courtesy of Pepsi. Any of these bats stand out, John? Well, an acrobatic shortstop. That's what you're going to see with that Drupal Cabrera. But don't. And it's Grady Sizemore in the box now. Now the Indians losing that last game. They'd like to turn it around quickly here. Game two of the series against the White Sox. Well, coming into this game, you know this team needs a win desperately. First pitch is a cutter. Looked at 0-1. Over their last 10 games, they've won only three. Clearly not good enough, especially for a team looking to the postseason. No, it's not. And they need that one big player to step up and help deliver a win for them, whether it be a hitter, a pitcher, a reliever, anyone to get this team a win. And Cabrera settles in. Oh, Gary, we see that guy get hit with a pitch. I mean, sometimes, listen, as a pitcher, you just lose a grip on the ball. It doesn't come out of your hand the right way. You end up hitting somebody. Well, working on the old one count now. And the question after you've hit a batter like we've seen oh. here, Steve, is as a pitcher getting your focus back. Yeah, but listen, it's only one run around. Take a deep breath. Get yourself back and settle down a little bit and, and make sure you're right. That's taken low for a ball, two and one. Two hits, five at bats, lifetime off Jared Washburn. A fly ball. One away. And a moment to check out the defensive alignment for the White Sox. I like Steve for these fielders. Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. It's going to be Laporta now. And if you're the Cleveland Indians and you're looking for how your season is going to progress, a lot of it lies on the young shoulders of Matt Laporta. Can he help carry this team offensively? Washburn set and delivered. Catcher can't control it. Now he's going to run for second. And safe at second. No problem. The 2 1 pitch. Cutter called strike two. Thing you don't know about Laporta yet is how good is he going to be. He only got 52 games under his belt last year. Yeah, he did, and he struck out 37 times and only 181 at bat. So that tells you that he's going to be a 150, 180 strikeout guy over a full season. But he's a young player, and he has to learn his way through the big leagues and take his lumps early. And hopefully later on in the season, he'll pick it up and deliver like he's expected to. Shin Su Chu looks to knock in a run. Back behind second, and that ends the half inning as Ramirez makes the play. And we've got Jeremy Sowers out on the mound. Cleveland's got him starting in this one. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? I think Gary's going to have to look for this lefty to back some of these hitters off the plate to make them uncomfortable because if they're comfortable, they've got a chance to do some real damage against them. Damon watches it for a strike. Look for the pitcher to try to expand the strike zone here. The hitter has to swing at anything close. He delivers. Strike three. Damon on a swing and a miss turned away. Shortstop. You know, sometimes in the back you go five, six, seven pitches as they start to follow off the 0-2 count. I like that he went right at him aggressively. Strikes him out on three pitches. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. A smash to first. Lineup for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. Scouting report, John. How about some things? Well, the potential's there for Alex Rios to be a productive hitter. So let's see if he can provide some offense for his team today because they're going to need it. And he pulls into first base with that base hit. There's one down here. 
Another young star in Alexei Ramirez came out of the uh, Cuban National Baseball Program. Obviously, they have to defect to get to Major League Baseball. On any time a team is going to build and build for the future, you want young players and you want young players up the middle. And that's what Alexei Ramirez gives the Chicago White Sox. Rung him up. Strike three. Count that one as a K. And a runner on, Carlos Quinton will hit. He's number one in runs scored in the league. There's a swing and a liner towards first. And Quentin's got himself a base hit. And he ends up at second. That's a double. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out. The guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. And Beckham's in the box. He's got a 292 average when uh, going up against the Indians. A smash towards the hole. The throw. Late throw, he's on at first. And there's the first run. They take the lead, 1-0. What a great piece of hitting right there to give his team that early 1-0 lead. 2-1-2 two out two for Alex Rios. And some production being seen in this game early. They've got a chance now to extend the lead. Well, they've taken out an early lead in this one, just where they want to be. Well, you know, when you hit like this in the first inning, you start to anticipate maybe a healthy bit of run support coming in this game. Here's the pitch. Probably should not have swung at that one. It's a strike, even though the ball was in the dirt. Oh, Gary, they're taking advantage of some early pitching mistakes. You have to do that because you never know if those mistakes are going to happen later in the game. Take advantage of the opportunity. They come out strong. And we're going to see Peralta here. Third number three, Johnny Peralta. It's hit foul by Peralta. Washburn set and delivers. Over near third. And Tien with the catch. And it'll be Valbuena standing in to hit. I saw the ball well last night, picking up two base hits in that game. Ball one. Here's Washburn, 1 0 pitch. 1 0 pitch is a fastball, swung on and missed. 1 1. 1 1 on the way. Good rip at that one, but he misses 1 and 2. One two pitch coming. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. He's out at first base. Nice play on the cover. Uh, that's a well executed play right there. Gary hustled over, got the first base, and touched the bag. Thought he might have had a strike out there, but he's involved in the out anyway. Starts him out with a fastball for a strike. No balls, one strike. Washburn. 0 oh, 1 pitch, a fastball, swung on and missed, 0 oh, 2. Well, that pitch right there, he just blew it right by the hitter, swung late. Hit in the air to left center. And the side's retired. Damon catches it as he heads in. And a quick inning for Jared Washburn. He's put in some effective pitching so far. And it'll be the White Sox. Second. Leading it off, A.J. Przinsky. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the lead. AJ Krasinski. The pitch drilled towards third. And that'll put Krasinski on first. Look at the hit leaders for this month that's on our State Farm leaderboard. That brings up Mark Tian. Number 25, Mark Tian. Great season, top 10 in RBI. Runner on first base, nobody out. The pitch. Swing and a drive, deep left center. This one to Sizemore. Able to glide over. Not much of a problem on that one. And now I've got a moment to see how the Indians are doing rank-wise in the American League. Number five, third in triples, fourth in batting average, and they also show up in the top five in batting average with runners in scoring position. A real tribute to their patience at the plate. It's about discipline and making the pitcher bring the ball over and then hitting in the clutch. 
Here's a swing and a fly ball. It is foul. Fastball got him two down. The velocity getting up to about 89 miles per hour, but pretty straight pitch right there. Well, he just looked overpowered on those two fastballs. John thought the uh, timing that time just didn't seem to be there in the at bat. Well, and a, and a strikeout like that will give the pitcher a lot of confidence. Swings and misses the slider. 0 and 1. His batting average 306 lifetime against the Indians. This one hit and a long foul ball down the left side. Strike three, Damon on a swing and a miss turned away. And Jeremy Sowers heads in. And he got that much needed goose egg in the second after giving up. There's Manny Acton, the manager. He knows he's going to have to get more innings like that last one and have some production to tie this one up. First pitch way out of the zone, ball one. Here's Washburn, 1 0 pitch. Fastball just misses, and he falls behind 2 0. Pitch on the way. That is a ball, now 3 0. Let's see if Kearns wants to try and drive one here. Well, he might have the green light right here, 3 0. Let's see if he's swinging. This one's grounded foul, wide of first. Now swing and a shot towards second. That retires Kearns. Let's take a moment to look at the staffs leading the way. ERA brought to you by State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Mariners. Third spot, the Red Sox. A is fourth. And we've got the Twins who are number five. Now when you lead line towards second, and that'll be Cleveland's first hit of the ball game. There's the throw. So that'll bring up Grady Sizemore. Well, they have waited to the third inning to finally get their first hit. Let's see if they can capitalize on this to produce some runs. Grady Sizemore is a guy that can hit the ball out of the ballpark, but he also can steal a base when he gets on. And those sorts of two-way offensive players can really change the dynamic of a game. Well, Grady Sizemore last year, an injury-plagued season, only 436 at-bats. Can he stay healthy this year? Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. For Sizemore, uh, Montreal Expos drafted him third round in 2000. Well, you can see why they drafted him so high. He's a great athlete, and he has the ability to be a leader of the team. Looked like the circle change, and it just misses 1-0. and oh. Now picked up three big base hits in the game last night, swinging the bat very well. And he looks at a fastball in there, 1-1. One one. That's a great pitch right there, four-seam fastball. The problem is you lay it right down the middle, you're running the risk he could hit it out of the park. Over to second for one. And a double play. They got a both. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. The White Sox still ahead. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. One of the best batting averages in the league. And here's the first one. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. And that one is in there. His second hit today. And that'll bring up Paul Canerco in his 14th season. Paul Canerco. Runner on first, no out. And he starts Canerco out. That's it, foul by Canerco. He deals. Strike two, no balls and two strikes. Panerko now will look to tighten up that zone. A big contribution offensively for him last night, driving in three runs. The Chicago White One away. Right oh, he cannot Number get 20. back there. He is Carlos out at first. But Gary, you get a chance to look at this double play and the replay, and this is an outstanding effort to make the catch, get to the bag, and make the throw. That's a rally killer. And that's going to deny the chance at a big inning here. Swing deep into right center field. Way, way back there. Out of here, a home run. They'll take that one run homer. They need that. Now the lead is two.
Well, he got the pitch, I think, where he wanted it. He wanted it down low. He got it there. The trouble is, he made great contact. Well, credit the hitter right there. He went down on the ball, drove it out of the park, and good piece of hitting. At the plate. White Sox Chicago lead White expanded Sox. here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Number 15, Jordan. Back Here's the first pitch. Swing and a miss, and he's behind that pitch. 0-1. And the home run there, Steve, the pitching's going to have to be very careful now. Well, that's right. Damage control is critical. You don't want this inning to get out of control. It comes off the wall and right. So there are two men down here, but they do get a man in scoring position. Number 51, Alex Rios. Uh, 0-1 mistake right here. He throws it over the heart of the plate, and he pays for it. With a runner on second, Alex Rios up. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored, top five. Here's the delivery. That's a strike, and it's 0 2. Time for Rios now to protect. A big part of the offense in last night's game with four hits. They'd love to see it again today. And Alex Rios has struck out a big swing and a miss. So they pick up a run on the home run and add to their lead. White Sox by two. Clear skies and U.S. Sailor Field on the menu for this afternoon. Glad to have you with us. And the first pitch. Cut fastball swung on and missed 0 and 1. Well, they've got a couple of hits here and we're into the fourth inning so they. Maybe they're starting to get something going in the second time through the lineup. Maybe they'll try to figure something out, Gary. Fastball swung out and missed, struck him out, one away. When you're getting guys out with three pitches, you know you're dominating. That's a time when you know you are definitely in the zone, and he was on that at bat. Chew into the batter's box. And if the Cleveland Indians are going to turn around their fortunes in 2010, they're going to build it around Sinshu Chu, the guy that hits in the middle of that lineup. He has to take the pressure off the other guys who have struggled for the Cleveland Indians. Two away. Let's take a moment to look at the Central Division standings as the season moves into June. Brought to you by State Farm. First place, the White Sox. Twins in the second spot. Third, the Royals. Tigers in fourth place. And down at the bottom, the Cleveland Indians. Can't say we didn't see this coming for the Indians. It's been a rough go in Cleveland for the whole franchise and for the fans as they continue to struggle. Here's a check swing, but a call strike, 0 1. No balls, one strike, Washburn. And good eye there by Johnny Peralta to even the count. Lifetime, two for 19 of Jared Washburn. And that ends the half inning as Ramirez makes the play. Nothing doing here in this half inning. No production yet from Cleveland. Leading it off, A.J. Krasinski. I drove in a couple runs in the ball game last night. A.J. Krasinski. The pitch. Line drive on a play down the right side. Swing, a ball hit high in the air, deep to left field. Gone, a home run. Putting a little padding on the lead. Solo shot up by three. No, Gary, they're not punching him together. That is the second home run they hit off him in this game. Maybe taking a look at his sequence of pitchers right now. Well, they're going to have to get it together with the pitcher and the catcher. Now, White Sox lead expanding here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Base is empty and no outs. Mark Tian. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. It's 0 and 1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. How's he doing? Well, lifetime 307 off Cleveland. Hit hard to second. Balbuena. That's one away. 
Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in doubles, first in batting average, and they're also the number one team hitting with runners in scoring position. That batting average driving in runners. This lineup knows how to hit in the clutch. They're patient. They let the ball come to them, and then they deliver. First pitch on the way. He swings and nails a liner. And Peralta is able to get to that one. As a third baseman, you have to be on the balls of your feet and react as the ball crosses the plate because it gets on you quickly. He has some kind of reactions down there. Two outs and nobody on. Here's the pitch. Damon will foul that one away. Here's a ball hit soaring into deep center field. That ball is still going. Tell it goodbye. Add one more to that lead. Fly ball out of here for him. Well, the pitcher's going to have to make some adjustments right now, Gary. That's the third home run he's given up in this game. The hitters have figured out some kind of sequence they're queuing on. Now, good hitting coaches help the hitters do that. Now, White Sox lead expanding here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Number 10. Base is empty and two down. Ramirez. Slider swung on and missed. 0 oh and 1. And Steve, you give up that big fly ball. Now trailing further in this one. Pitching's got to find a way to shut this down right now. Well, that's right. Listen, now with the bases empty, you've got to get in your mind that you're starting over and get out. Cut fastball swung on and missed. Side retired. So they get the long ball working as they have two solo homers in this half of the inning. The White. There's a familiar face, Isaac Gian looking up. Things have been going right for him. His ball club today, uh, last half inning, they proved productive. Now they're looking to expand that lead. Lined right at the second baseman. Back I'm able to pull that one in. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow night. It'll be Matt Kemp and the Los Angeles Dodgers. They'll be playing host to the visiting Atlanta Braves. That one is scheduled for a 10 o'clock start in the Eastern time zone. Oh, Gary, that should be a fun one to watch for sure. And Brantley's in oh. the box. And the Cleveland Indians are in a rebuilding phase, and they're going to try to rebuild around a young power hitter named Michael Brantley, a guy that they think they can help carry this team offensively. That was a called strike of the knees, one and one. And for Brantley, an opportunity in 010, he hopes at least to have a full major league season. He didn't come up till the expanded roster occurred in 09. Well, and he has a great pedigree. His father played in the big leagues for a short while with the Seattle Mariners, so he has that big league knowledge before he even got to the big leagues. Let's see if that can lead into a promising rookie season for Michael Brantley. Swings and grounds this one foul wide a third. Ground ball to short. Tian over to Canerco. Two retired here. Well, Gary, you know, he's settling into a groove right here. And that's six in a row that he set down. And Kern settles in, ready to go for his pitch. Circle change is right there for a called strike. Well, offensively, they just have not been able to get anything going. Only one runner left on base. So they just need more opportunities and see if they can't capitalize on it. Washburn set and delivered. Check swing held back, but it's a strike anyway. One and two. The one two pitch. Swung on and ripped towards second. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no one left on. 
The shutout is still in progress here at U.S. Cellular Field. Things will start getting a little more difficult as we look to the third man to lead it off. For those of you just coming on board, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Cruck bringing you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. And Paul Conerco to lead it off. Well, leading the league in home runs. That's it foul by Conerco. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. Conarco fouls off another. Well, I said we've seen some great plays on the field today, and how about some great plays by the fans as well, Gary? You look at a section, a standing Gary, ovation. They're all up over there. I want to see the peanut guy make a diving catch now. Let's go. Able to set him down there, chalk that one up as a strikeout for him. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now, leading the MLB in batting average. Here's a swing, a fly ball deep down the line and right. It's back towards the wall, and he still puts it away. Here are some teams that have uh, really been seeing the ball well. The highest batting averages for the last 10 games, courtesy of State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Indians. In third, the Yankees. The Angels, fourth. And it's the Red Sox, number five. Well, there's nothing more fun in baseball when your whole lineup is hitting the baseball. And over the last 10 games, the batting average of these two teams have been absolutely phenomenal. And that's what you love. Both teams at the top of their games offensively going at it head to head. Hit sharply towards the hole. And it gets through. Finding a way to get on base today is third time. So that'll bring Alex Rios to the plate. Well, he's having himself a day right here in this one. Two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. In the top ten in hits. Shot back to first. And there's the third out. No runs on a hit and they'll strand him. White Sox four. Cleveland nothing. Marson's in the batter's box. One for four in his career against the White Sox. And here's the first one. Watches that fastball that goes by him for a strike. Gary, he's not felt any pressure out there on the mound. The defense has not felt that much pressure either. We only one runner left on base, and you know, we're moving through the middle part of this ball game. So, you know, they're doing a nice job shutting down this offense. Tries to ring him up with a fastball away, but it's one and two. And the one two delivery from Washburn. Strike three called on the fastball. What a way. This is the effective use of the fastball. You can move it around the zone and hit your spot. They go down and in right there. Looks like the hitter was thinking away. And we're going to see Sizemore here. Right there in the top five in home runs. Here's Washburn, 1 0 pitch. And he takes a strike on that fastball, 1 1. Looks like the hitter's waiting for a pitch that he can get up in the zone to drive a little bit. That's why he went down to the zone with that four seamer. Tian. Over to Conerco. Two away. And a chance to check out the schedule for the White Sox. Tomorrow they wrap up this Cleveland series. Following that, they face Miguel Cabrera series at home against the Tigers. That's a three game series. After that, they cross bats with another first place team, the Cubs at Wrigley Field. And Cabrera settles in. Two outs, space is empty. First pitch on the way. Cutter misses badly. One and oh. Now the 1 0 pitch. That's low. Cabrera not going. Hit in the air. And that one falls in there for a single. He's going to try to stretch it. There's the throw. And he's now in there. No play. The Cleveland Indians. Get to take a look at one here that probably should have ended at first base. Well, he had the burners on coming out of the batter's box and rounding first base. Great aggressiveness on his part. He didn't let up, and he gets in safely. No indecision when he got the first base. That's how you get in safely to second. 
Here's the first pitch. Fastball just misses. 1 and 0. Here's Washburn. 1 0 pitch. Can't connect with that fastball. Now it's 1 and 1. Cutter misses and it's 2 and 1. Fastball on the black. He doesn't get the call though, and it's three and one. Here's the pitch. And that one's gonna miss. That'll be ball four. He'll take first base. Now that base on ball doesn't now help anything for this pitcher. Well, it didn't Designated look like he wanted to give him anything to hit right there. Ball four taking base. Shin Su Chu looks to knock in a run. Nothing. Six lifetime ABs against Jared Washburn. There's a strike at the knees on one. Well, when you throw the fastball, that's where you want it to go. Now you can elevate a pitch next time around. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. Throw over to second base, a force to retire the side. So Jared Washburn holding the... Take a look there, Manny Acta. Thoughts of the manager, one can only speculate, but at this point, you've got to believe he's, he's got some words for that next practice. It's going to be Przinski. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. Here's the delivery. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. This one to Sizemore. And he gets over to take care of it. The teams who have been reaching home the most over the past 10, courtesy of State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. The Yankees second. The Blue Jays third. The Indians fourth. And at number five, it's the Angels. Well, there are stretches during the season when every team struggles to score runs. But these two teams right now in these last 10 games have found a way to be able to throw runners across the board. They are doing it in every single way. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. As he gets to it for the up. It's going to be Nix now. Hitting such a mental part of the game and coming off last night when he had three hits, he's got to be feeling good. Here's the first pitch. Hit sharply down the line. And the throw in time for the up. No scoring here, ending this half inning. White Sox. And Johnny Peralta to lead it off. 0 for 2 thus far. Number 3, Johnny Peralta. Oh, he loses control of that one, and that got him. And it'll be Valbuena standing in to hit. Gary, with this hit batter in this inning, we're starting to see now maybe a, a pattern for me here that he just doesn't have as good control today. Swung and a ground ball to third. That's one away. And you know he's looking ahead and feeling pretty good about it. And with good reason. He hasn't given up a run yet, and he's got to be gaining confidence. First pitch to him. Paints the lower outside corner. Call strike one. Now, Gary, it's tough to score when you only get three hits. We're deep into this ball game, and they have just not been able to mount any pressure against him today. And Przinski calls for the pitch. Oh, tough one to lay off right there, that fastball. One and two. A two-seam fastball is such an effective pitch. One, because it gets ground ball outs, but two, it sets up his other pitches. Washburn set and delivers. Wow. And it goes foul. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. That should be a base hit. And Peralta's on his way home. It rolls all the way to the wall. And they score him. Uh, just to say, we see the shutout broken up right there, Gary. But still, just a tremendous performance today. One out with a runner at third. Now the first pitch. There's a swing and a miss behind 0 and 1. And Jared Washburn delivering the strike quickly up. Well, if he can throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be big. Swing soft liner towards left center. And that one gets through. Kearns, he'll get the RBI. Steve looked like that was a strike. Ball was up high, but I think in the zone. Well, up and away, but on an 0-2 count, you're thinking, I need to make contact. Exceptional job of eye-hand coordination. Marson's in the batter's box. 
You're looking at a lot of swung on line softly to the right side. And that's going to be a base hit. Tying run is on. Now, Story of power play. hitting. State okay, Farm brings you a look at the long ball Center league leader. That's a big time power hitters right three, here. Some guys three, that look to drive the ball out of the ballpark and swing hard in case they hit it. When they make contact, they can do some serious damage. Here's the pitch. Swing and a liner to left. And that'll get him aboard. They're on a roll. Now up to the plate. Well, this is not what you imagine when you go out to make a pitching change. You bring a guy in from out of the bullpen, and the first hitter he faces, he serves up a hit. Let's see if he can get out of this. And he starts Cabrera out. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. He's out. Two away. And Kearns crosses the plate. Well, all these solid at bat right there. This is what you want to do with a runner on. Find a way to get him in, even if he hit into an out. Off the plate with a fastball, and it's 1-0. No bend on that bender, and it's 2-0. Well, this would be a perfect pitch if it stayed in the zone. This slider just slipped. On the ground to third. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. They pick up four hits in the inning and three runs across the plate. The Indians are not. None other than Ozzie. That's Ozzie Guillen. Now, he's not happy with his club. They're still out in front, but he knows they cannot afford to have innings like that and still win. Oh! Damon will foul that one away. Jensen Lewis quickly gets that count in his favor. 0 2. Lewis with the pitch. Strike three. Damon on a swing and a miss turned away. Now you take a look at the pitch sequence right there. Three straight quality strikes. Well, tight games like this, uh, you get going late. You love to get these outs as quickly as you can. Well, quickly and efficiently, and the best way to do it is a strikeout. No room for error right there. Gets the big one on three pitches. This one's grounded hard up the middle. And so Ramirez retired. With the Chicago White Sox. First base. And it's Paul Canerco now. Struck out swinging his last time up. And he starts Canerco out. First pitch, fastball, 0-1. A good four-seam fastball right there. You have to know yourself. He didn't think he could catch up to it. Better off to take it. And Paul Canerco strikes out. Could not make contact. Save your arm. Do it by pitching only eight times in one inning, three outs. Chew into the batter's box. Designated hitter. Number 17. Shinsu Here's the Chu. first pitch. Towards the middle. Pena, nice play. So Chu is retired. Fast reaction by the pitcher right there. That ball got back on him quickly. He makes the play. Nice job. Good pitch as he's late on that one. 0 oh and 1. Well, I think for the pitcher's perspective, keep the ball down, keep it in the ballpark, and keep it out of the gap. Force them to hit singles and lump hits together. The pitch, swing and a line drive. And that is in there. The tying run is on base. Now batting. Well, that pitch down and away is the toughest in the game to hit. A perfect pitch from the pitcher. Great piece of hitting. And keep that in mind next time around. We'll see whether or not he changes up and how he throws to this guy. There's a swing in contact. This one to Damon. Two down. Time for the State Farm leaderboard. We look at the staffs that have been issuing the fewest base on balls for the month. Number one, the White Sox. The Royals in second. Third, the Mariners. Fourth spot, Rangers. And we've got the Twins who are number five. Let me take a look at these teams. These are the teams that believe that their defense can make plays behind them. They're not worried about getting the strike out and trying to do it by themselves. They trust their teammates. Up the middle. And that is in there. The go-ahead run on base. 
A real solid approach, trying to work gap to gap up the middle of the field. Gets a fastball on the outer third of the plate, but able to stay on it and get himself a base hit the center. Well, this is a situation where a hitter like Austin Kearns can really change the outcome of the game with just one swing of the bat. He's three for 11 career off the White Sox. Strike two, no balls, two strikes. Kearns to Ken K. He doesn't want to do that here. Like Gary, one out here remaining in the eighth inning. You've got to try to do something offensively. And I think that with two outs, even if you hit a single, you've got to think double out of the batter's box. Force them to make a play. Get yourself in scoring. Two left on for the Chicago White Sox. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos. First pitch Quentin. to Quinton. Lewis gets him to swing and miss for a strike. But just a little bit out in front of that fastball on that swing. Strike two. Strike two. Now with no balls, two strikes. Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. The pitcher. There's a swing towards the hole. And it gets down a three for four game. Good hitting job. Now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First to batting average. First to batting average with runners in scoring position. He's also a hit machine leading the league in hits right now. Swinging the bat well. Every time he puts it in play, he seems to find a hole. Straight away left. And it gets down. Hit after hit. They just keep on coming. He's got four today. He talked about a guy who's just wearing out the opposition. That's a four hit day for him. He is locked in. Lewis with the pitch. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch, 0 and 1. Apparently, he's looking for something a lot harder than that fourth. Now, swinging a shot towards second. And it's in time from his knees to get the out. Once he made that stop, he was going to have to make a throw in a hurry, and he did. Well, look how quickly he gets the ball to the throwing hand. That was the key for the out. Here's the first one. Swung on, a fly ball heading towards the corner and right. It's off the wall on a hop. The throw, and Quinton's home. And that makes two. Well, with that big hit right there, he only needs a triple to complete the cycle. But hey, that's the toughest one to get. Let's see if he can do it. Now here is Mark Tia. Steve, we've seen them continue to charge it up at the plate, and it doesn't look like they're going to be stopped. Well, they're taking advantage of add-on time, and the opportunities are there. They're cashing in, adding on to this lead. And you hope the pitcher's a little frustrated right here, maybe makes a mistake in a bad pitch, and you add to it. Well, you, you know, Gary, you're right. Swing sends this one on a line to right center. Can't cut it off. It's going to roll to the wall. The throw, and Pierzynski comes in. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Designated hitter, number five. Jason Nick. I tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. And Saul Rivera is the pitcher. He's coming on in relief for the Indians. Swing and a miss on the cutter. 0 and 1. 0 1 pitch is a cut fastball. Swung on and missed 0 and 2. Well, I tell you what, you throw a cutter with that velocity, that's a great pitch. You understand why the hitter swung late. Well, he finished that one off with a strikeout. Nice pitch. First pitch on the way. Rivera gets him to swing and miss for his strike. Here's the pitch. Strike two. No balls. Two strikes. Veteran Damon, though, he'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. Fastball is a waste pitch that time. One and two. Bring him up, strike three. But boy, what a solid offensive inning that was. They pick up four hits in the inning and three. We're looking there at Manny Acton. He's reflecting right now. Not uh, likely a lot of positive reflections, however, in this game. He delivers. 
Too far outside, 1-0. Oh. Well, I think right now offensively, you've got to start getting base runners. Get as many as you can. I mean, you're down a ton, so you don't need big hits. You don't need home runs. You need base runners. Slider just misses the black, falls behind 2-0. Oh. He watches that fastball. That goes by him for a strike, 2-1. The hitter thought that ball was inside. It certainly wasn't low, and it looks like it was in there. Strike Lays two. off that fastball. It's a called strike, two and two. Oh. Tough pitch to lay off that time. Full count, three, two. Here's the payoff pitch. Oh. And he misses on that one. Ouch, ball four, leadoff man's on. Now that's what you want out of leadoff man in the inning. Get on base any way you can. Great patience at the plate. So that'll bring up Grady Sizemore. Two for three thus far. Liner towards the hole. And Conurco makes the catch. And they'll hold him at first base. Obviously, uh, you know, winning big right now. You just want to go out there, make plays, throw strikes, force them to try to put multiple hits together to get back into this game. First pitch fastball misses badly that time. 1 0. And as Drew Cabrera with a swing and a miss for a strike and an even count. Boy, he's got great movement on that two seam. Swing and a bouncer up the middle. Up with it. That's one. And they get two. Great double play. A good all around effort, Gary, by the White Sox today allows them to get the win. They've got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. Now we award our Pepsi Clutch performer, great mound work, Jared Washburn. And, and for our listeners' benefit, and for you also, Gary, I would have liked to avoid some sort of cliche, but it never stops being true. You can't have enough starting pitching in Major League Baseball. And he gave a command performance today in this one, showing just why having that starting pitching is so vital. And Steve, they're able to win this game rather handily. Bit of home cook in here that was right on from the beginning. Now, Gary, as a player, you always like having the 